Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you for joining me today. Oh boy, I'm so excited about today's guest, and I will get to welcoming her on in just a moment. In the meantime, I would love to remind you guys that last week we had a solo episode, and I am reminding you, not because I want to pat myself on the back too much, but (laughs) mainly because there were some messages there from Spirit that are really important and really powerful uh, that, that are about basically all of the things that is on our hearts about ascending, about coming together, about loving the planet the way that she should be loved, the way that we want to, the way we love her in our hearts, and to be able to actually make a real impact in our own lives. And it is about animals and nature as well. So I would love for you to check out last week's episode on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Trisha Carr, or on any podcast outlet, which you can find by looking on iTunes or iHeartRadio or any kind of podcast broadcasting app that you use uh, by searching Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. And if you do enjoy the show, please subscribe. Please share, like, comment. All of that just adds to the energy of it. And I so appreciate you. And thank you for joining me live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific. You can watch us on ubnradio.com slash channel one or on channel one you'll see it (laughs) or on any of my social media outlets which you can find by just searching my name basically or trisha car charm and i want to also let you guys know that i have an incredible schedule of classes coming out every month i'm going to be teaching and so do please go to my website trishacarcharm.com i'm going to be teaching several classes that are just on my heart many to do with nature animals nature elemental spirits also angels and other ways that you can open your intuitive abilities and all that kind of stuff and to that point i would like to say hello to the lightworkers lab hello labbers the lightworkers lab online spiritual community in which I am a moderator and a guide, a teacher. It's a fantastic community. You can find it by searching the Lightworkers Lab on Facebook. We have free resources like you wouldn't even believe it. It's founded by my best friend, Crystal Ann Compton, and the teachers there are remarkable. And there are people up every single day teaching, offering their love, offering their light for absolutely free. And it's a beautiful community, a beautiful fellowship. So do go check out the Lightworkers Lab. And hello, Labbers. All right. Well, that's about all I want to start with on this show, uh, the preliminary, the announcements, the what do we call that? The housekeeping. And now I would like to welcome my guest. She is an amazing, amazing guide and teacher. She is a YouTuber with an incredible, prolific, just packed full of the, the, the resources and the information that she brings forth. I just don't even know how she does that. It's amazing. She's a writer. She is a qualified past life regressionist therapist and spiritual guide and her name is Nikki Sutton. Welcome Nikki. Hi Trisha, thank you so much for having me. And then of course she's as adorable, you just want to put her in your pocket. <laughs> How amazing is her energy Jarvis? <laughs> oh, thank you. Have, I just want to say you have a really lovely show. I've enjoyed watching a few episodes and it's really good. Thank you, that really that warms my heart. I appreciate that. That is high praise. <laughs> Lovely. And your channel, oh my goodness, you're doing a series right now on Hermeticism and the Kybalion. And oh, wow, that is incredible work. I really do love the Hermetics practice. And how, how is that going? How, how is that being received by your, by your audience? Are they be, is their mind being blown? <laughs> Oh, well, pretty much. It's being received pretty well. I've only done the first three so far, but I'm going to work my way through all of them. And I think it's really important for people to help them to understand the nature of reality Mm. and to understand and the nature of self even better they're really important principles and and quite sort of easy to understand really if you just open up to it so I thought if I go through it and just give people my own take on it maybe that'll help them and just to know about the hermetic principles as well is a good thing just to know they exist in that as well so hopefully it's helping some people they seem happy so far anyway (laughs) I think they're fantastic and I love I love your interpretation your take and how you ground it and expand it i i think it's also helpful to look at something that is a more uh, more an- antiquitous kind of text and realize this isn't really new age it's just reality <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely. It, it ties in with science quite a lot mm-hmm. and quantum mechanics and a lot to do with psychology as well. So it, it to me, it all seemed like it was just really good common sense uh, from the past, but it just ties in so well with all these spiritual principles today. And I try not to present myself as new age or, right. or any sort of dogma or anything. So I, I try to cover a big wide range of, of different topics and scientific stuff, college, inner work, plus your twin flames and your soulmates and everything like that as well, which people love, mm-hmm. trying to stay away from from being too dramatic and things like that but hermetic principles really are key to understanding some some things which all lots of other wisdom springs from really that's yes I agree I I love doing that in my teaching as well to really try to bring in as many perspectives as you know I'm not an expert in science but I do find a lot of inspiration and I just love how quantum mechanics is starting to explain to a large degree what we have been feeling. I mean, we who are you know, spiritual guides have been feeling, and that is just, it's it really fantastic. It helps people to release their resistance and release their fears about how they had been socially conditioned and really to go within and be okay and and celebrate what is making sense in their heart. So thank you for that too. Thank you for that teaching. But- <laughs> well, I think also things like um, quantum quantum theory, like the unified field theory, it really helps us, as you said, explaining how we've been feeling because it explains how we're all connected. And that theory of us being all one, it really, really backs that up, the unified field theory because we're all one energy Mm. and uh, we're all in this together co-creating our reality together but interacting with one field so science really is backing up what spiritual people have been saying all along really (laughs) yes it's very exciting and you know I was just thinking last night as I was speaking with my academic sister-in-law, who is, is lovely and wonderful, but also in her, you know, a very feeling person. And I was explaining to her that I'm going to be teaching a class on unicorns. <laughs> and she... Wow. And she was, she said, I need unicorns to be real. Like, you know, she was having a moment of just saying, yes, I I believe in unicorns. I need them to be real. And she, like I say, she is an academic, a historian even. And I, I found that I was talking to her about light spectrums and what we can see and what we can experience through a third dimensional lens. And so... Is it so unusual if we consider how we can now see microscopically and even atomically? And that's relatively new just because we have some technology that we discovered to be able to help that filter of the third dimensional eye and, you know, physical expression. And now we can see that deeply inside something that is physical or to the place where it's basically non-physical. So we could probably eventually see to the expanse, the expanded version of that, see out into the non-physical. I think, do you think, (laughs) do you feel that may be happening? That maybe quantum physics and mechanics may be helping us along that line? See into the into the non physical. Well, if you think about it, kind of everything is non physical anyway. Or physical, uh, right? Well, they're they're thinking it's. um, an information-based reality that we are interacting with. So the physicist Tom Campbell, I definitely recommend him and and looking into his stuff. So he he researches this and believes that we're interacting with a field of information um, rather than there being anything physical at all. And he believes that it's um, it's actually all being interpreted within the mind, just like if you were to have a dream, it's all being interpreted within the mind. And yet when you wake up, you know, it's not real. So in that way, you know, your unicorns could definitely be real because you know, your thought manifests reality and dreams have a reality of their own, you know. So if you've got um, unicorns in your dreams, for example, they'll have a reality of their own. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 
And part of the work that you do, actually, I love to always start with, but I got I got so excited right away. <laughs> that usually happens. We get off on a topic when I have an amazing <laughs> guest like you. But I, I would I know that you do a lot of work with a part of your background is in past life regression, but you do a lot of work with connecting with the higher self and doing sessions along those lines. Would you like to just explain, you know, tell us a little bit about your journey and the work that you're doing. I would love to just have the, my audience understand everything that you're about. Okay. Well, I did a course in past life regression. That's the past life therapist association in the UK. So it's a, a good uh, body, that one, a good little college, that one. Um, so I did my uh, past life therapist uh, training and I offer that online via Skype and clients really like that. And it can be done online perfectly well. Mm-hmm. Um, so then after that, I branched into other types of hypnosis. Just by doing these things, you learn what people want and need, as you know. And, uh, and so, you know, it, I figured out that people's higher selves were trying to say things. And so I developed a hypnosis where we, I take the client down and they connect with their higher self themselves. So instead of having a reading, they connect themselves, you see. Love that. And uh, we prepare some questions before we go in. And, and the way it's presented is um, through hypnosis, things come through sort of visually. Uh, they, it's sort of like clairvoyance. They get some clear audience. They get some clear cognizance. A lot of a sort of sense of knowing comes through. So they might ask about, you know, their life path, what they, what they should be doing in life or solutions to problems or or methods of healing themselves. And, and these things just come through. And we ask it of the higher self and these things come through. And clients are, are pretty surprised, you know, they're like, wow, this is, you know, this is really vivid and it's just coming through to me. I think we need to have this connection with the higher self. And hypnosis is really, really good for doing that. So I do other things like meeting your spirit guides and, uh, and I do a general sort of uh, guidance and chat session as well. But the higher self hypnosis is proving really, really popular, actually, and, and it's quite healing for a lot of people. I love that. And you developed this. You developed the, the technique to, hip, to bring the hypnosis for the person so that they could connect on their own. You developed it on... The technique? Yeah, you know, I've developed my own. I don't know if anyone else does something similar, but sure. I developed my own uh, script for it. So when sure. you're doing hypnosis, you have a, a script to read to take the client down, you know, and you put your soft voice on and everything. And then, and then after that, you know, I developed it so that we can. I take the client into an area in their mind, yeah. specially designed for the higher self to come through. And and yes, as I say, it comes through as visuals and sounds and feelings and sensations and all things. It's it's really quite wonderful and profound, actually. That I mean, it sounds very much like what I basically do every single day in my in my meditation. I think that you know, when you have a meditation practice, you basically are putting yourself in an altered or trance like state, and then just being in that high vibrational self, higher self connected, and you know, connected with spirit guides and and creator energy. So, do people come away with? understanding how maybe a little bit more it seems like if they're like wow it's coming through so clearly I didn't realize how clairvoyant I am or I'm sure that is quite impactful besides the literal information that they bring through well you know what it gives them the tools to be able to go away and do it themselves because right. oftentimes they, they don't realize just how easy and subtle it is to communicate with spirit guides or higher self you know yeah. and you know yourself it comes through as thoughts that pop in there and and knowing that pops in there and if there's no big as I always say there's no big signpost up saying okay we're communicating now you know <laughs> and you don't like hear um voice or well, some people do I hear voices but it, it's a very subtle thing you know and and people uh, often say oh I don't know how to do it it's, like, it's too difficult and nothing's happening when they realize they've been communicating all along really and um and this method shows people exactly what the process is like and I help them to figure it out. And then they can go away and do it themselves and away they go, able to communicate with their higher self themselves every day if they want. That's fantastic. Wow, Nikki, I just, I love that. What what fantastic work you're doing. You must, that must be just the most amazing, like having a party every single day to be able to connect people to their own power in that way in these kinds of sessions. 
it feels really good. See, I'm new to these kinds of things as well, don't you? So, so you, you know, it just feels really nice to help people and help them to realize that they're not just, just the human being, that they are more. Some people want a, a bit of proof, you see, and it just helps them down their path. And yeah. if they make a profound connection, that's, that's impacted their life and it's changed their notion of what they are and what reality is and some people they don't always get the proof do they like you know I've seen some earthbound spirits and I've had wonderful contact through mediums I had my proof so if I can help other people connect themselves and then they receive that sort of proof that that this is the real thing you know it's very profound as you probably know yeah absolutely and did I hear you say you're you're relatively new to this kind of work did I understand that? Well, oh, well, um, I had my spiritual awakening now about five, six years ago. So then I started the YouTube channel. I mean, I wasn't ready and I found it a bit scary and everything, but I just felt like it was something I had to do. And then I trained in the past life regression. So that was about three years ago now. So I guess, yeah, that is quite new. It really, uh, my, I'm similar. I've actually, my spiritual awakening was just a little over three years ago. And <laughs> All right. Yes. I mean, to, to a particular, I, I should say like the meta, the metaphysical opening, you know, to, to the, uh, there were a lot of the lenses came off and I really connected with it, but it turns out it's, I can see now as I look back all along, I had been practicing consciousness and, you know, studying other teachers like Eckhart Tolle and, and even in my, my Christian background as a, as a youth, I was in evangelical Christianity and I had quite spiritual development then, but then the dogma got in the way. And so I had to leave the, that, you know, that, uh, the limiting kind of perspective there for me. But that's amazing. And I love I love to highlight that because you are working alongside of and not to make one feel boastful or anything like that. But it is because it is a testament to to how the fact that energy doesn't really require time. Growth is what is required. And, and growth doesn't really need that much time. You know, we don't have to think about it from that outside perspective of, well, if I'm going to be doing something different with my life, it takes 12 years because that's how long K through 12 education is. <laughs> you know, that's how we're kind of conditioned. <laughs> when really, when we're just becoming more natural, it can take very little time. And I, I think it's very encouraging for people to understand that, you know, as successful and as much help, how helpful you are to others, it really hasn't been that long. And that's a fantastic thing. Well, yeah, let me look at yourself you're doing amazing light work doing your show and everything else you do and it hasn't been that long exactly but you know i think um the growth can come quick when you have remembering because mm -hmm. a lot of this information we come across it's not always just learning it fresh is it it right. triggers some kind of remembering for us so it comes up through the subconscious and a lot of this stuff I learned about it. it was more of a confirmation like well, I kind of thought that all along you know I wasn't going crazy in my teenage years I was I, the thoughts I had you know they did have basis so oftentimes the growth can come quite I think because we're remembering stuff rather than learning it fresh you know what I mean 100 percent. I actually tell my students that a teacher doesn't actually teach you anything a teacher holds space so you can remember and access what you already know and that's the truth I think Absolutely. Yeah. I actually agree with you yeah and we learn from our teachers and the teachers learn from us and we're all learning as we're going along every moment of our lives so to be done in the classroom oftentimes better not in the classroom you know out in nature things yes. like that lots of learning to be had social relationships all of learning so mm -hmm. yes absolutely and you know the that can be highlighted by the phenomenon of having heard something 100 times, the first 99 did not impact you the way that you heard it. The 100th, which was, you could be like, I've heard that literal thing. I've learned that 99 more times. But today, this moment, it popped in and I had an epiphany about it. And I think that's also encouraging just so that people can relax into their spiritual awakening because they aren't changing and becoming something new and otherworldly. They're becoming more their natural selves. And that should be that should help us to relax and actually ground into the experience. Absolutely. 
absolutely, yeah, we're transforming into the true self. But my partner says that. He says he's got to tell me something 99 times. <laughs> it's 100 times. I actually sinks in. So, yeah, that's familiar. But, yeah, we are, we're definitely becoming our our true selves and that's the idea and it's returning to love I think so I think that's the the truth of every matter that's the truth of our reality and that I would feel or information-based reality is love written into the code that's the ultimate truth of it and everything else is distortion so by bringing love into every situation we're going back to our true self somewhat. Every social situation can be solved if we take, if we put on the glasses of, of seeing it through love, you know, um, and uh, we, should all, we should all take that with us every single day, colour our, color our interactions with love, mm. and it will improve every, every one, I think. <laughs> Oh, yes, because that is who we truly are. We are love. We are composed of love is, is what I like to say. <laughs> and like you said, love is the is in every single molecule, every every bit of matter. It is it is the truth of of the create or the manifesting experience. I think that is that is the truth. That is the highest truth. Nikki, we do actually have a yes. caller. I didn't I didn't give the number yet, but someone saw it on the screen, 323-524-2599. If you have a question about, pro, you know, Nikki really helps people with their spiritual awakening. So if you have any question for either one of us, do um, do please call in. And if you, if you wouldn't mind, Nikki, let's take this caller now. Let's see if they have something they would like to ask. Yeah, oh, fine. Hello, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi there. Who's this? Oh, hi. I'm Donnie Fultonier. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, wonderful. We have Nikki Sutton on the hi. air with us. Hi, Nikki. Hi. <laughs> hi there. How are you? How y'all doing? Uh, good. Thank you. It's been a nice Sunday. Lovely. Uh, oh. I had a I had a question. Uh, uh, I don't know how to really go about it. Um. Let's see, a while back, about five years ago, uh, me and my wife had separated and a lot of things were going on, and uh, my father, that almost became a priest at one time, <clears throat> had been meditating and said that he had a vision or something come to him uh, for me to meditate, mm. and uh, he told me to, uh, you know, he's like, before you go to sleep tonight, go ahead and meditate, and then just see what comes to you. Well, in the, in the meditation... Uh, I imagined a triangle from my forehead down to my feet and back up. And, uh, it was, uh, I basically just saw white light and I don't remember entering the light. I just remember it consuming the area around me. Mm. And then, uh, uh, I'm standing in a dark room and I see a wall with a window cut out like a, like a serving window or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I see this, uh, well-dressed guy, but he's like, it's back like, Oh, the old country days and stuff. He, he was like a, uh, like a real slick card player, I guess is the only way I can think to describe him. Anyway, he looks at me through this window and he's kind of surprised that I'm there. And, uh, but he knows me. At least this is the inclination that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he hands through the window a ball of red and white light. Now, the red and white light was a bunch of little bitty balls that were colored dots of red and white. And he hands this thing to me. It's about the size of a softball. And uh, so I take it, and it starts to kind of bleed down over my arm. And I get the, uh, I'm given the idea to consume it. Mm. So I eat the thing down, and then I kind of flash off to a side profile, and I see the little balls of light, you know, consuming my entire profile. And then that's pretty much where it ends, and I just, you know, it's kind of been with me for a while, and I didn't really know what to do with that. So this was the first time you meditated, basically? Oh, no, no. I've been awake since oh, okay. early teens. My dad, <laughs> my dad uh, opened my third eye I unknowingly gotcha. okay. uh, years and years ago, and I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of things happen. <laughs> okay, okay. I was like, because my goodness, <laughs> if that's because I, I, the way you told the story. Yeah, I no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly spiritually inclined, sure. uh, but... 
you know, there's just a lot of things that you just, you know, you don't know everything. <laughs> yeah. And so this sounds very much yeah, like an astral sorry. projection. Nikki, what do you think? D- doesn't it feel very much like he was occupying his astral body um, pretty strongly? Yes, possibly, or, or receiving um, a vision. But, I mean, obviously we weren't there in, in this vision with you. So you have to ask yourself some questions, um, which is best done in a relaxed state in itself. So your subconscious is dominant. Like, who was this card player? Was it someone you know? Um, what do you intuitively feel that that ball of red and white light was? What was it, its perp? And and listen for those responses, you know, that sense of knowing what comes to you. What's the first answer that comes to you? Um, what do you think it was? And uh, um, yeah, do well, you... as far as uh, who the card player was, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you do. Please go ahead. Go ahead, honey. Okay. Um, the card player just uh, kind of gave me like, like as if he was a guide of some sort or a um, guardian mm-hmm. or, you know, something like that because uh, like I said when he looked at me he gave me a look of like he knew me sure. you know but I've never seen you know obviously it's just my uh, physical manifestation of what I was experiencing of course yeah so uh, uh, the red and white balls of light uh, I really didn't understand what the red had to do with but I understood white as being healing mm-hmm and uh, I've always uh, I've always had it in me to you know want to help others and you know be in the medical field or different things like that, which I didn't end up there, <laughs> but I've always had a thing for it. And both my parents were in the uh, hospital field, and so uh, I believe it had something to do with healing. Mm-hmm. But um, the red the red I'd never really understood. Well, I can and, offer uh, you. I can offer you some yeah. perspective that is universal, but as Nikki is saying, that it's more personal. Your personal perspective is the one that is going to be the truest. And sure, yes, of course. And so, you know, the red could, like you say, you understand the white to be healing. Red often has to do with grounding. You know, it's it's the color of the root chakra, and it is that um, slower uh-huh. vibrating ex- uh, light spectrum is the red. So. The white and the red together, the white being more maybe like the eighth chakra color or even higher, the other transpersonal higher chakras, and then the red being very grounded in the physical body. And we're talking about healing and we're talking about it being an experience in the third dimensional, you know, in the body even. So I would say that. And the other thing I'll I'll tell you is that often when I get symbols or something in dreams or in meditation, that a a lot of times it's kind of like, I'm creating it and my guides will tell me what do you want it to mean and the first thing that comes up is or what or the what the most resonant thing that comes up is the answer and the thing is because time is an illusion you actually did set that in advance with your guides even you know because time everything is but yeah. when in if yeah, we're feeling exactly. yeah we're feeling it so it, what comes up for you and it, perhaps if it is that it's grounding and it has to do with that root chakra kind of um, light frequency then maybe that's it and you also plan to come on this show and talk about it and then that resonated <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah true true yeah because i've always i've always kind of felt very grounded but mm-hmm. you know spiritually inclined so like sitting on the fence both between the negative and light energies mm-hmm. that i just had a good inter- a general good understanding of both well that's what a healer does too a healer stands in the gap so that makes a lot of sense uh, you know i think that i think you you've spot on with it on your own nikki yes did you have a okay. See, you kind of answered your own questions, you <laughs> see, and you just needed someone to mirror it back yeah, on I you. I tend to so do you that. Like the more I talk my way, my way through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you felt like it was a guide, and then it was a uh, healing energy and Trisha helped with the meaning of the red um, and that it could be to do with you being in the medical field. So, so you figured that out. And then the next question is how did you feel after this experience? Uh, well, during that time I was, uh, I was being attacked physically. So there was a lot of trauma going on Mm -hmm. and I was trying to find peace, uh, peace of mind. Uh, you know, I have, uh, custody of my two boys that were involved. So there was a lot of, uh, fear, you know, where their safety was concerned and different things. Um, so at that time I was really, uh, it's hard to say exactly how I felt. I mean, I felt like I knew where I needed to go spiritually and to stay in touch and to keep grounded and not let things get 
out of control because I've always felt like I've been led. So I kind of took it as um, not as necessarily a, de- a devastating situation, but I looked at it as my manifestation from any time prior, removing things out of my life for a better future. And that was kind of what helped me get past all that. So I had a very, I had a pretty good outlook on things, but, uh, my spiritual path didn't really start until then. Mm. Well, that sounds fantastic. Although my, like, uh, although, yeah, although I said my, my dad had almost become a priest years ago. So, you know, religion had always been in our family yeah. and he didn't know that he opened my third eye years and years ago. So like I said, I've had a lot of things happen over the years. And I feel like uh, that I may be in uh, fifth or sixth density. Mm. But again, there's just so many things I don't know about. Yeah. Wow. What what a fantastic share. Thank you for, for sharing this with us. But it sounds like you are pretty much on your way and just being able to get it out and talk it over with Nikki and me. <laughs> I think you knew the you knew the answer. Yeah, so yeah like I said, there were a few <laughs> things that just really didn't make much sense. But uh, thank you for your help and your guidance. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for calling in today. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we were having a little bit of a technological glitch, so then uh, Nikki will probably be able to get back in. We, she is she is uh, zooming in from the UK, so it may just take a moment. And thank you so much, Angels, for allowing the technological uh, components to cooperate with us. And in the meantime, let me talk to you guys a little bit more about that whole idea of how we are how we might experience something like a past life or the higher self and as nikki and i were discussing it you know everything is you know, in the highest truth if we if we accept the fact that there is endless space or that there is eternity then that means in a higher perspective that there is no such time t- no such thing as time or space because if space never ends then truly we just have markers in an infinite sea and so this is how you know Nikki has the background in past life regression but in this experience of of putting oneself into hypnosis or trance or that meditative space, we can actually seek guidance from all aspects of the self, whether it is a past life that is past as oriented to this linear experience of 2018. It could also be a future or parallel life. And that may blow the mind a little bit, but just know that it is actually perfectly natural. It is a part of the experience of being spirit in physical form. We can actually go into that meditative state and seek guidance from either the higher self, as Nikki's saying, or from a future version of the self on this timeline or some other timeline that we actually want to access. You may have heard me talk before about how when I went to I went to a, a workshop with Bashar, who is a, a six, I believe he's six density extraterrestrial channeled by a man named Daryl Anka. Bashar tells us that we are accessing billions of parallel or potential realities per second. So we're just selecting potential realities because energy cannot be destroyed. So any thoughts or any creation in the thoughtscape that happens exists and they exist in all time in quotation marks and space. So this is how, and I believe that, you know, quantum physics, as we're saying, is actually helping us to understand this in a way that is a bit more grounded. But it's okay if it's not grounded too. It's okay if we're experiencing this in our hearts. If we're experiencing it through the channel of love, then that to me is absolute confirmation that that feeling of love is actually the resonance with the higher self. And that feeling of love is the truth about who you are. And so always just pursue that and be comforted in the fact that love always is safe and love always protects and love always heals. Love always moves us higher and further toward the, the what is the potential, our highest potential or the higher self. It looks like we probably lost Nikki for the rest of the show. And um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and then make this a shorter show. Um, and thank you so much to Nikki Sutton for coming on today. Do check out Nikki's work. Her website is NikkiSutton.com. Is that right, Jarvis? Yes, I think it's on the screen, NikkiSutton.com. She has a lot of amazing services up there on her website. And also check out her YouTube channel. Like I said, so dense with wonderful service and information. And um, she, thank you for being on today, Nikki. Again, 
she's calling in from the UK and, and you know, I'm, I always trust that spirit is absolutely working it out exactly as it's supposed to. Don't I, Jarvis? When Jarvis is all nervous about like, oh, the technology. And I'm like, no, it's working out. We're starting at 11, 11, 11 today. That's perfect. <laughs> And I would just tell you to, well, I'll take another moment to say, like I said, I'm going to be teaching a lot of classes. I'm going to be teaching monthly. So do please check, uh, you know, stay um, tuned into my website. I will be announcing it there. And also I have a Facebook group that is facebook.com slash groups slash charmed life love. So you can find the group there and I will be serving the group more, doing some uh, live events there. And I'll be announcing the classes. I'm going to be doing a series of how to work with certain kinds of elemental beings. So I'm going to be start literally starting with unicorns. And these are ascended horses. These are in the angelic realm. And uh, this. so I have had very real experiences and real guidance from my unicorn guide. And uh, just unicorns in, in like I say, there are, and if you if you can imagine light beings of any kind, know that these are ascended beings that have they have gone they've ascended up to the angelic realm. And so I will be teaching about unicorns, dragons, and other kinds of elemental spirits. I'm going to be breaking it down. I do have a class that is an overview, a survey of the of the elemental nature spirits and the elemental guides. And that's on my website. You can find that if you want to take that now. It's, it's a great prerequisite for it. And I'm also going to be doing a series of classes to help one to connect with archangels as well as the different universal principles and how to be able to master them and use them in the life. And understand, I mean, we're, we are using them anyway. That is the truth of our existence. I know it's Abraham Hicks. She says, you don't have to understand gravity in order to not fall up. <laughs> that's the, so, you know, that's the truth about the universal laws, the spiritual laws as well. So uh, I think that I think that we'll go ahead and, and uh, wrap up this show today. But I really appreciate you so much for joining me, whether you're joining me in one of the archives or live. And we will see you next week at 11 a.m. Pacific on UBNRadio.com Channel 1 or on any of my social media outlets. And again, my website is TrishaCarCharm.com, NikkiSutton.com. You'll be able to find her website links in the show notes. And I will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Oh,